infinity. What an incredible concept. You can picture the earliest men and women staring up at the innumerable stars or watching grains of sand slowly slide through their fingers and think, what is this thing without limit? I want to take you on a brief little stroll through the history of the infinite. Let's start with Zeno of Alea, the philosopher who gets credit for first introducing the concept of the infinite in the West. Actually, that's not quite right, because Anaximander had introduced the concept a few years earlier of the boundless, a pyron, the thing that's without limits, a scary kind of notion that the Greeks really disliked. You can't build a Parthenon with the boundless, right? Zeno found that whenever he introduced real infinites into the world, he ran into paradoxes. So let's take the fastest Greek of all, Achilles, and let's set him in a foot race against a tortoise, right? Can we give the tortoise a head start? Is that all right? Right, so the tortoise is out there in front. We, an hour later, he's made 100 feet, right? And then here goes Achilles. Zeno says, well, he's got to go halfway to the tortoise first. And then he's got to go halfway between there and the tortoise. And then he's got to go halfway, you get the point? Achilles, Zeno argued, could never pass the tortoise if infinites are real. Because he always has to trans transverse half the distance and half the distance ad infinitum, right, to the end. So the infinite and paradox are linked from the very beginning. Let's move on to Pythagoras. We give Pythagoras credit for inventing the notion of mathematics, which by the way in Greek means that which can be learned. He did it with a quasi-religious orientation. The Pythagoreans said that each integer has some sort of philosophical or spiritual meaning. And the ratios between the integers are crucial, seven-eighths, one-fourth, and so forth. So the harmonic progression was, for them, a religious insight. He launches the idea of the theorem, and what's the most famous theorem from Pythagoras? The Pythagorean theorem, right? And all of a sudden, the whole project goes to hell in a handbasket, right? We've got an equal, uh, equal right-angled tri triangle, one and one, so we see one squared plus one squared, two, Right? Equals c squared, so c equals the square root of 2. But that is an irrational number. To write down the square root of 2 would take us infinite digits with no repeating pattern, right? Right in the middle of the religion of the infinite breaks out the impossible, irrationality. The religion of rationality shot to hell right at the outset of the story. Let's step over to India for a moment and see how things look different over there. We go to the great founder of the Jain religion, you know, Ahimsa Mahavira. The Jains had introduced a notion that hadn't been used before, the difference between that which goes on without ending and the truly limitless, the truly endless. They also began to distinguish orders of infinite, so there's infinite in length, infinite in area, infinite in volume, and infinite perpetually. So amazing comprehension in India some 2,400 years ago. All right, let's step back to the Greeks and come to Aristotle, the father of some two dozen sciences, that crucial thinker. Aristotle realizes that with actual infinities, we are in deep doo-doo. Basically, physics is not going to work well. So what he decides is that there exist no actual infinites. We have to banish that concept from the physical world if we're going to do good science. So he says it's fine that we can have a potential infinite. It just can't ever be actual. So for example, the potential infinite is start counting upward. You can go as long as you want to, but in a finite period of time, you only make it a finite distance. Let's go to the high Middle Ages, the scholastic period, and that greatest of thinkers, Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas says, as a theologian, I'm interested in a different question. Y'all are interested in quantity. I'm interested in a quality of existence. What mode of existence would God have 
the divine. God would be qualitatively infinite, which means God would be ens perfectissimum, the most perfect being. It's a mode of existing, it's a way of existing that sets God apart from anything else, not quantity. So he bifurcates between the mathematical infinite and a religious or philosophical infinite. Moving on to the 15th century, we find the Bishop of, of Cologne, Nicholas of Cusa. And here's a theologian who decides he's gonna go to, with the infinite all the way, no restraint. So the infinite, what is that? It's that thing which has no limits, therefore everything must be included within the infinite. Mathematics love Nicholas of Cusa because he used mathematical examples to describe the God-world relation. So God is the circle whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is therefore nowhere. And finally, let me close with that great heretic, the one that the modern thought loved to hate, Baruch de Spinoza, a Jewish, fascinating <laughs> Jewish philosopher, kicked out of the synagogue at age 14 for allegedly saying, that God has a body. Spinoza decided to write his metaphysic in the guise of, a ge of geometry. If God is infinite, God is the one substance. No, there can be no other substances besides this one. The substance must have infinite attributes, and we, finite little beings, can't be separate beings, so we must be modes of the one. God, however, is not the transcendent God, the personal God who does stuff. He used the phrase Deus Siva Natura, God that is nature. God and nature become absolutely one for Spinoza. Half the philosophers revere him as science friendly, half the philosophers revere him as uh, theological. For him, it is um, the intellectual love of God to know nature to know yourself as part and parcel of nature and to behave together with nature. The infinite then focuses Spinoza from theology back into the natural world. When you're called the father of the infinite, well, except that I have repeatedly pointed out that there are more react more than one father and that there are a number of events in catalogy, but most people want to know the mother of the infinite. Well, that's the father.